Thank you for joining with me. We are in the journey through the text of A Course in Miracles with Ken Wapnick, Ph.D. We are in Chapter 3, The Innocent Perception, and we are under Ken's subtitle, Christianity. And this is page 84 of Volume 1. The crucifixion did not establish the atonement. The resurrection did. Many sincere Christians have misunderstood this. No one who is free from the belief in scarcity could possibly make this mistake. If the crucifixion is seen from an upside-down point of view, it does appear as if God permitted and even encouraged one of his sons to suffer because he was good. This particularly unfortunate interpretation which arose out of projection, has led many people to be bitterly afraid of God. Such anti-religious concept, concepts excuse me, enter into many religions. Yet the real Christian should pause and ask, how could this be? In milder forms, a parent says, this hurts me more than it hurts you and feels exonerated in beating a child. Can you believe our Father really thinks this way? It is so essential that all such thinking be dispelled, that we must be sure that nothing of this kind remains in your mind. I was not punished because you were bad. The holy benign lesson the atonement teaches is lost if it is tainted with this kind of distortion in any form. There is no apparent escape from the ego, which explains why Christians, however well-meaning, ended up murdering each other and others. The underlying guilt was never removed. It remained unconscious, and what remains out of awareness is inevitably projected a psychological law that is as true as the law of gravity. Thus do otherwise well-meaning Christians consciously believe they are following Jesus, the Prince of Peace, all the while bury their thought system of sin, guilt, and fear, and death. Once projected, it is no longer perceived to be in them, but in everyone else, including God then they feel justified in hating and attacking, because someone else sinned first. Again, until the unconscious thought is undone, everyone, regardless of his or her religious persuasion or lack of it, is condemned to repeat the insane thought system of separate interests, attack and victimization, and nothing will ever change for the thought system of murder has been placed in the hateful hands of God himself. Persecution frequently results in, attempt, in an attempt to justify the terrible misperception that God himself persecuted his own son on behalf of salvation. One purpose of the Course coming in Christian language is to have Jesus say, in effect, this is the thought system that for 2,000 years has been proffered in my name, and it is wrong, not evil or sinful, but wrong, because it cannot be this way. A Course in Miracles is not singling out Christianity because it is more insane than any other thought system, but simply because it is the one in which Jesus' teachings have been seemingly enshrined. The Course represents an attempt to take the Western world's greatest symbol of love and correct the mistakes that have been perpetuated in his name. High on the list is the notion of making sin real and having God, made in the ego's image and likeness, undo it through sacrifice and punishment. Accordingly, this is Jesus' point in the opening section. Sacrifice is a notion totally unknown to God. The purpose of sacrifice has been to protect the choice that was made to establish the ego's reality. Sin accomplishes this by teaching that we have indeed separated 
a decision we then protect by saying it is not in the mind but in the world's evil, which seems so palpably present that our punishing is our punishing it is demanded. When we bring God into the picture, therefore, the ego is forever safe until a correction such as A Course in Miracles tells us how mistaken the ego's thought system is. I'm going to stop there and pick up on that last sentence that brings us into the next text reading tomorrow. I thank you so much for joining with me. I hope you have a most beautiful day, and I will see you tomorrow. I love you. Thank you.